everybody, Tim here coming at you with a brand new series. So recently I did kind of a poll and I was like, well, what show should I do? Because there's a lot of shows out there and I kind of got my Doctor Who thing going on. Like, what do you guys think I should be doing? And it kind of came down to two different shows. It came down to The Umbrella Academy and it came down to The Boys. The Umbrella Academy did end up winning only by like slightly, like it was very, very close. And to be honest, I did kind of give it a little bit of a bump only because as of like today, season two comes out in like 10 days. So I was like, you know what? It's 10 episodes. It's an episode a day. Easy peasy. Can blow through that. So I'm going to kind of, I, I don't know what to expect. I'm just, I went into this 100% blind. So I've never read the comics, which is surprising, which is funny also because I'm now doing graphic novel reviews every Friday. So if I really like this series, who knows? Maybe I'll go out and I'll get some of the comics. But I think season two of The Boys comes out in September. So maybe after this, I'll go into The Boys. <laughs> but anyway, um, overall, starting with the first episode, like I said, no idea what to expect. And I gotta say, the first episode blew me away. I was really, really intrigued. I thought it was a lot of fun. So we got Umbrella Academy, season one, episode one. We only see each other at weddings and funerals. I can absolutely relate to the title. Don't know, how, like, I mean, after watching this episode, I know how it ties in. But I have a lot of friends and a lot of family that we never see each other anymore. Except for weddings and funerals. So I get it. The whole opening scene threw me for a fucking trip. Where it's like these swimmers, the boy kisses the girl, boom, she gives birth. And I was like... This is what they tell you. They warn you, but you don't listen. Kisses get women pregnant. Obviously not, but whatever. Uh, we find out that it's 1989. So already, I'm like, I, I don't know what this is about. And like I said, I cannot stress this enough. I know zero about this. Didn't even realize it was a superhero type comic, TV show, or anything. Zero about it. Just that it was really popular on Netflix. That being said, we find out that... Sir um, Hargraves uh, adopted seven of these children. 43 of them were born at the exact same time. He adopted seven of them. We meet number one, Luther. Prim I, it looks like he's living on the moon. Number two, Diego. He is the hero. He's like a superhero. He like saved this family. And number three, Allison, who is a celebrity of some sort. I don't know what she is. I don't know if she's a singer or an actress or maybe she's like Paris Hilton. She's just famous for no reason. I don't know what's going on. We meet number four, Klaus, who is kind of my favorite so far. He's super adorable and he's a drug addict. Go figure. So, I mean, we all have our vices. That is strong. That's a lemon drop. Um, anyway, so anyways, big twist is the father has died. Hargraves has passed away as all good things do happen. And then we meet number seven, uh, Vanya, who is playing the violin. She's playing fan of the opera. It's fantastic. Really, really well done. I'll be honest, I think she's the only actress I know of so far in the show, Ellen Page, who's phenomenal. So it's not a secret. I drink a lot through the reviews, through the episodes, through everything, through life. That's how I get by. That's my coping. So shows like this fuck with me a little bit and it's not nice to do because i'm watching it and i'm like okay i think i'm with you and i'm taking notes like you guys should see all my notes i have notes all around my camera because i'm like notes keep notes so okay i'm keeping notes number seven vanya and i'm like wait where's five and six fuck it i i restarted the episode because i was like fuck i missed something paying attention i put the drink down and i'm focusing i'm like no nope, no nope, i didn't miss it they just fucking skipped right over to number seven so i was like okay that's my bad i gotcha anyway um we find out that hargraves died his monocle is missing where did it go we meet my favorite character so far is pogo the talking chimpanzee at least I think he's a chimpanzee. He looks like a chimpanzee. I am that guy who gets mad when people mistake or like confuse apes and monkeys. 
I absolutely love Planet of the Apes. I have talked about doing reviews for all of the original Planet of the Apes, the Planet of the Apes TV show, the Planet of the Apes animated series, the new Planet of the Apes, the Burton Planet of the Apes. I don't care what the fuck it is. If it's an ape and it's on a planet, I love it. So I've thought about doing it. So as soon as Pogo walks in, lost my shit. I was like, oh my God, it's Caesar uh, or Cornelius. I actually like Cornelius more because it's Roddy McDowell. Anyway, not the point of the show. Lost my shit. So far, he's my favorite character. So we find out that number five has gone missing 16 years. And it's like, shit, okay. Which, again, drinking a lot. I can't, like, do the numbering thing because I think of Stranger Things, which I've done those reviews. Little plug there. Check out the playlists. Um, and all I think is number 11. So I'm like, wait, is number 11 going to join the Umbrella Academy? Like, how's that for a crossover? Anyway... So, number five has been missing for 16 years. Klaus, cannot say that name without thinking of Lemony Snicket. Klaus has the ability to talk to the dead, evidently. And so I guess they all have superpowers, except for number seven. Very sad. So Klaus, they're like, call dad. And he's like, it's not a fucking payphone. I can't do that. Which is why he's a drug addict. That makes sense. I am down. Luther's obviously a bodybuilder. Diego has like Batman ninja powers. I don't know Allison yet. But I mean, we, we learn it very, very quickly. But still, like these are kind of happy powers. Like if you just keep talking to the dead, yeah, anybody who's seen The Sixth Sense or like any other ghost movie, that's what people do. People who can talk to ghosts end up doing drugs because it helps. So. I'm down. I'm not judging Klaus. All the love. Anyways, um, this is where we learn about Allison's powers, the rumor thing. 17 years ago, we get a flashback of her as a, as a little girl, and she's like, I heard a rumor you shot your friend. And then he does. And so it's, it's basically like this, she can talk people into doing whatever she wants type power. This gullibility, I guess? I don't know what you, how you would phrase it, but it's, it's an interesting sort of power. We also get a little bit of other things, like we see one kid that can teleport, and we can see one kid that can transform. So it's like, okay, so we're, we're slowly getting, that has to be five and six. I don't know which one's which yet, but five and six, we got it. Um, let's see, this is when, oh, my favorite part of the episode is when they're playing like, I think we're alone now, and you just see everybody dancing in the house. Random fucking scene. I was all about it. I paused it. I listened to the song by itself. I was so into it. Okay, so we get that. Um, we get number five coming back, and he teleports through. So I was like, okay, so the teleporting kid has to be number five, and the transforming kid has to be number six. We're, we're good. We, we got this. So it turns out that number five has jumped into the future and has now come back. So even though he looks like a 13-year-old, which he doesn't even look like a 13. He looks like he's like 16 or 17 to me. But anyways, so he's 13, and but really he's like 58 years old. So damn. Okay, this kid's going to be really interesting. I'm super excited for this. We see Diego and Luther fight, and they break Ben's statue. If Ben has a statue, presumably dead. Got it. We see them all get little umbrella tattoos. Got it. I'll, I'll do this arm because I have a tattoo on that arm. So we got it. Um, I love, like, Five at the diner and with his dad, and he wants black coffee. And then he finds the tracker because these people show up and just start shooting everything. And he actually, like, cuts the tracker out of him. I'm like, shit, okay, this is crazy right now. Crazy. And then it turns out the world's going to end in eight days. And it's just, just this giant wasteland. This show's fucking insane. I can't even keep up with it. So I'm super into it. I'm super excited. I might actually do all 10 episodes tonight, realistically, if I don't pass out. Um, I'm, I'm into it. I love it. So curious what you guys think. I realize most people have already seen this. I'm going to, I'm only going to post one video a day because I don't want to overload people. But 
I'm gonna binge this as quickly as I can because I know some dick out there is gonna be like, oh, this person dies in episode eight, sucks to be you. So I'm hoping nobody spoils it, but at the same time, I'm gonna binge it very quickly so you guys can't. I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know, and I will see you guys next time for Run Boy Run.